Hey what's up, I'm Adam if you're new here and if you're returning then you know what's good. Today I want to talk about financially levelling up. So many of us want to live certain lifestyles, enjoy certain experiences, be able to buy certain products and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But of course an understanding of how to put ourselves in those financial positions to do so is key to achieving those lifestyles and that's what I want to get into in this video. Last year I completely changed my financial situation. I mean going from no job and relatively no savings to thousands in savings, multiple streams of income, investing, you know, so much change in my understanding of finances in the world and my place in it and I wanted to share that here and share some of the most important lessons that I learned last year that I think are key to levelling up financially. So the first and perhaps one of the most important lessons I learned was that it's not enough to work hard, you need to create value. A prime example of this would be if I have a hairdresser who it takes them three hours to do somebody's hair and they make, let's say they make a hundred pounds from that. They've only been able to do maybe three people's hair in nine hours. They worked extremely hard in those nine hours. You could argue that maybe it's not reflected as much in their pay. Now take somebody who is on YouTube and may do one person's hair but shares that with thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. And their income may be double, 10x, 100x times what the person who just doing a hairdresser and doing one person's hair was doing. It's not about one's working harder than the other, but one is able to create value that is reaped by more people, right? The spread of that information and that ability to do hair is touching hundreds of thousands of more people potentially versus the one person who's impacted by that hairdresser doing that fantastic hairstyle on that individual. And this is the thing about understanding the difference between working hard and creating value. A lot of us get emotional and think, I work really hard and I deserve more money, but how much value are you creating? And once you accept that that should be your focus to create value, then you can start to maximize and optimize your income because you can focus your energy in creating value for as many people as possible. But the same can be true for different types of employment, right? So I could argue that when I was a receptionist, I was working really hard, right? Eight hours a day on my feet, doing all the things I did. And yet the value I created as a site reliability engineer was reflected in the substantial increase in my pay at that role, the skills that I brought, right? The products I was able to produce, the work that I was able to produce was able to create more value in the market. And therefore I was remunerated appropriately or um, in accordance with that difference in value created. We can all scream at billionaires and shout at Jeff but how many of us are using Amazon every day to make an order to get the next day? How much value has been created? The next thing I learned is that multiple streams of income will completely change your life. I went from having well zero streams of income when the pandemic hit and I lost my job to having four streams of income, including my main job as a site reliability engineer, YouTube AdSense, the selling of my fitness guide, my lifting guide, sponsorships, which I haven't even really explored so much because I'm quite finicky with my channel, but that's another thing in itself. Um, and I'm hoping to expand that more. Also the passive income I get from my investments. And so I've been able to build up multiple streams of income and that has significantly been reflected in my savings, my investments, and the way that I get to live through life. And I think the key thing about multiple streams of income, and especially having streams of income that is not directly tied to a time for money exchange, i.e. you go to work and an employer pays you is really key because it means that not only can you increase the streams of income, but you can increase the amount of energy you put into those streams. You decide you've got a business and you want to start taking that to the next level and seeing more income from that. Well, then you can spend some more time in that and you know that you could put more time, money and things into that and yield a bigger return. The next thing I learned is investments aren't as scary as we might think. I'd like to give a quick anecdote about my investment history, shall we say, because I haven't been doing it for very long, but in the short amount of time I have been, I've seen some great returns. So I started investing in crypto back in 2019. I got into it because I was speaking to a friend who also has a channel, Earl. I will leave the link to his um, channel in the description. And he told me about crypto stuff. And so it sounded really interesting. And I went home and did some research and thought, you know what? I'm going to go for this. And I did, and I put a little bit of money in Ethereum, a little bit of money in Bitcoin, you know, just whatever. It wasn't anything crazy. But then I didn't look at my account for a while because there was a lot going on. And when I did, my investments had seven X. It was seven times what I had put in there. And this was a really important lesson for me because I haven't been exposed to investing that much. 
um i didn't do anything finance related at university and at that point i hadn't sought out that much information in finance and investing but this was a real life example for me of how your money can multiply literally just sitting there if you invest in the right things or if you take the risk at all so i'd like to illustrate how you can get over that fear of investing to start off with especially if you're new to this and you haven't tried investing in anything at all whatever you choose to invest in if you make a 200 pounds 200 dollar pretty little thing order the moment you buy them clothes and you know put them on you're at a loss even if you try to resell them you're not going to get them at the value that you bought them and unless you are going to use that to make content that you yield money from or something you're at a loss you made no money off of this item and chances are you're going to get bored of it and it's going to stay in your wardrobe now imagine you take that 200 pounds and put it in an investment or a series of investments all with the potential to lose money just like any investment but they also have the potential to stay the same and they also have a potential some higher than others to keep growing like the example that i showed you coming back to a 7x change in the value of my investments so Thinking about it like that, instead of thinking about, oh my God, I've got to invest nine million pounds in Microsoft tomorrow <laughs> or Apple or whatever. Think about it in a smaller sense and how you can just swap out some trades or some purchases you make for an investment. Maybe you start off by saying only half of the money is going to go to that and the other half is going to go to investments. And that will start you off becoming comfortable and understanding that, hmm, actually, this isn't as scary as I think. If you are interested in getting started with crypto, I will leave a link in the description bar to one of the apps that I use. And yeah, so check that out if you will. The next thing I learned is that being without debt, especially consumer debt, will change your life. I have always been very cautious of debt. I never took out a credit card. When everyone was at university taking like a thousand pound, two thousand pound overdrafts, I was like, I don't need it. I don't want your money. I don't want it. It's not mine. And if I can't afford to buy things, I can't afford to buy things. It's as simple as that. I need to find another way to get that money in. And the major thing about debt is it doesn't allow you to really be as free as you want to because you have to answer to somebody else. You want to move somewhere. You've got to consider, OK, I still have to pay 10 percent of my wages towards this debt or, you know, I want to make this investment in my company. Damn it. I've still got 10 grand that I haven't paid off of this particular thing or oh, my credit cards are skyrocketed and debt is really crippling and being without debt even when i was starting to build up my incomes and i might not be making anywhere near as much as other people or even where i am now it allowed me to move through the world more freely and move through my financial journey more freely and so i would say avoiding debt especially consumer debt that leads to no returns is a major key to leveling up financially like it is a major key i'm seeing on websites that you can buy clothes buy now pay later there are very few circumstances that that is a justifiable thing to do or justifiable thing to do if you can afford to buy the clothes to post on instagram today if you didn't have the money today you don't need it just fight me if you want okay so the next thing that i learned is with regards to spending money actually and here is that spending money on experiences always trumps spending money on products. When you spend money on experiences, it was almost guaranteed you will gain something from that experience. Even if the only thing you gain is knowing that I don't like X, Y, B, and Z, I don't like doing this, or I don't like this particular space. But often you will learn about things that you do like, or you'll be able to interact with people and learn from them, or you'll be able to share something with them, or you may be around a particular setting and it inspires you, and then you go off to do something else like, I don't know whether it be photography or it makes helps you with writing a particular piece or helps with your something that you're doing at university right like experiences carry with them the opportunity to gain more often than not versus stuff which i've already kind of spoken about in this video so spending money on experiences i don't think is an issue when done reasonably i'm not saying spending your money on an experience that happens to be six months in jamaica but now you've got no money left <laughs> But being reasonable about it and not being afraid to still enjoy life whilst getting yourself together and that may mean enjoying life on a smaller level until you can get to where you want to get to so the next lesson i learned is that if you do not understand something or do not have information on something that regards to finance and business go and seek it out a lot of us are waiting for things to happen in life information to come to us with all these ideas and crazy things to just happen versus going out there and actively seeking what you need. 
And so if you're not familiar with cryptos and you want to get involved, go out and seek information, go and watch the channels that are talking about it, read articles about it, you know, go and look at some of these apps that are allow you to purchase it and sell these things. Get involved if that is what you are interested in. If you want to start a business, but you're not quite sure how to build your first website, go out and seek that information. There is a wealth of information out there. And a lot of the things that are coming in the technical space are designed to make your life easier in a sense that if you want to build a website, it's just as simple as putting a few things together. Okay, I'm oversimplifying it, but you understand what I mean. Like you don't have to write the code anymore to build the website. Then my final lesson that I learned is about simplifying your life and redirecting your energy and effectively your money into the things that matter most. A lot of us, our minds are everywhere and they're racing and they're trying to take in so much information and absorb so much and pour into so much. And often your money falls um, or follows those thoughts. So redirecting that energy into the things that really matter to you, the things that you're really passionate about, that you really care about, can really make a difference to your financial setup and you know to what you reap financially. And so there is something to be said in a world with so much going on about simplifying your life. So that's it, those are some of the financial lessons that I've learned that have helped completely transform my finances, my savings, my investments, the way I look at life and move through life. And I hope that's been helpful for you. I'll see you in the next video.